All right guys, so I'm just working on some knives here in the shop. Figured I'd bring you along for the day. We've got a smattering of various projects undergo. I'd like to get this handle finished shaped up. This one's been sitting here for a long time, as well as some of these. Need to make a leather sheath for this guy. But I need to fire up my kiln to do some stainless steel knives. It's actually the knife I have to heat treat, but there's no reason to fire up a kiln to like 1950 for a single blade. So I think I'm gonna cut out a couple more knives from Nitro V, those will be upcoming builds. And I'm thinking a couple slivers and maybe, I've got a couple different ideas I'm thinking about. Trying to maximize the material. I wonder if I could get two of these. I think I could. Two slivers. Oh man, we're so close. We lay that out like that. Yes. drawn out with the contact wheel. Now I'll switch up to this flat one and uh, bring everything to that line. The reason for that is obviously if you're on a contact wheel, this service is gonna be curved, but the contact wheel runs cooler, it removes material better than a flat platen. Extra little step, but I think it's worth it. Here's what's been sitting around for a while. May as well heat treat this one too. All right, so we got our blades cleaned up and now we need to wrap them in our stainless steel. Every now and then you'll get questions, why do you use stainless steel to wrap knives? And the reason for that is that these stainless steels need to be heat treated at a very high temperature. This is all Nitro V and for that I use 1950 degrees Fahrenheit. And for a 20 minute soak, what ends up happening at that temperature is that you'll actually end up burning the carbon out of the knife. So we put them in a stainless steel envelope, crimp the ends down really well, essentially rendering that environment that the knife is in, inert. Well, it's not inert, but once the oxygen's burnt off, there's no new gases coming in, no new air getting into the envelope, and thus, without oxygen, the carbon can't burn. This stuff is outrageously expensive as well. 309 heat treat wrap. I think this, 25 feet of it at 24 inches wide, I guess it's 100 bucks, couple hundred bucks, not cheap. 24, I'll basically do one knife and one knife, so we'll roll this out, cut it, fold it, crimp it, and then also the final step. The step is something I've learned and it makes a big difference. Obviously different knife steels act differently, but what I find is that Nitro V has a propensity to stick to the foil. So I coat my blade in baby powder and that actually completely uh, prevents it. I've had some of these blades stick so much it was as if the foil and the, the knife were welded together. Couldn't get them apart, I've ruined a couple blades and I don't know where I saw it or where I heard it but folks say, hey, baby powder on the knife, it works fantastic. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> I 
All right, so we've got two of the knives in the heat treat oven. They've been in there for 20 minutes, so we're gonna pull them out. I gotta set up my little quench plate setup. Right now it's just on this. And I need an air line. Check out this beast of an air gun. This thing is so sweet. I like it. Well, it actually turned out pretty good. I was a little worried with this thing being ground so thin pre-heat treat, but nothing wrong with that at all. So super stoked, we've got these all hardened. Everything went nice and smooth, so now I'm gonna string these all together. I should be able to fit them all in at one time. We'll dump them in the doer and give them a deep cryogenic soak. These have been in here overnight. Oh boy, come on, come on. Oh yes. We will let these warm up to room temperature. All right, the first temper cycle is done. Number two. You hear that? It sounds like it's inside, but it's not inside. It's almost inside. It's right there. Those little jerks. They are so loud. I think I need to see a little board up on there or something. Okay, so these blades here, half of them came out straight, half of them have a warp. Now seeing as none of these are actually for customers, I'm actually going to order a carbide tipped hammer. I've heard a lot of folks talking about that method of straightening a knife and apparently it works phenomenal. I've heard nothing but good things. So right now this is curved like this and the way that these hammers work, I mean, I'm just going from what I hear, is that you put your warped blade so that the banana is like this and this is the side that you hit on which seems a little counterintuitive. You think if it was like this, you'd flatten it like this, but in fact, it's the opposite. When it's like this, and you hit on this surface, it relaxes. I don't know what it does, but these two are quite substantial. And I've broken quite a few blades using like the little pins that I put in my vise and heating it up. So I'm just gonna try that. I'm gonna order one of those carbide hammers and give it a shot. But this sliver and this pen knife came out very nicely, as well as the minimalist EDC and that little last ditch necker. So we're gonna go ahead and get working on those. And then this guy still, this guy, this guy. Marked up some lines. We are going to thin this handle down. It'll be just over three quarters of an inch wide. And then we're gonna keep it the same thickness all the way down. This here tapers up from here to the, to the butt of the knife. We're gonna leave that in there. But when I put in my octagonals on this thing, instead of 45s, I'm gonna bring them more like this. So kind of be like an ovalized octagonal handle thing. We'll give it a shot, see if it works.
All right, just taking a break from the hand, sending that handle. We've got a little bit of a thunderstorm. I was just hand sending away, uh, cleaning up that handle, and I heard stuff pounding on the roof. So we're getting the old thunderstorm. It's kind of good. I don't mind the moisture. So off of the disc sander, I've been working this handle up from 220 grit, 400 grit, now I've jumped up to 1000 grit. And you can see these sides, these parts have been 1000, starting to get a shine, whereas this is still at the 400. There's a basic profile of the handle. I put in these little reliefs for a pinch grip, just to make it a little more comfortable. It's still a pretty big handle, fairly substantial, but I think it'll suit the knife when it's all said and done. So we're just gonna keep cleaning up. And then for the final cleanup, the way I do it is just on my granite surface plate. So I'll give you a before. You can see this part here, this thing would focus. It's not quite as shiny, like it's got that sheen on here and here, but not in the middle. I need a new piece. That's one thing people always tell you is that don't, don't try to save money on your abrasives, and it is 100% true. You're gonna go through abrasives like crazy in knife making, that's just part of it. And there you can see it's shining a little bit better now. And I will be taking this all the way up to 2,000 grit. So this is kind of what I'm looking for. So I want it to be like a piece of glass as far as how flat it is. And you can just tell that by looking down at it. And obviously when this is perfectly flat, these lines will all be perfectly straight. I think we're about ready right there. Now we're gonna hit it with some boost block oil. What I'll do is I'll usually put a coat of this on, let it sit for an hour, put another coat. Now this, this wood is stabilized, so I honestly don't know that this step really does that much, but I like to feel that it does. It definitely doesn't hurt, so that's why I do it. But uh, nice. I think the reason it gets so shiny is just because we've removed any of that real fine surface dust on there. I am happy with that. That's how I want a handle to be. Very clean lines, crispy. Just like that. Cool. All right, this thing is progressing quite nicely. I'm gonna put another coat or two of boost block oil, let it sit overnight, and then tomorrow I will come in. I have a little cleanup on the blade to do, and we're gonna put the maker's mark on, and then we'll go ahead and glue the sucker up put an edge on it, and this thing will be ready to go. But I just got a call that dinner is ready, so I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.